Hello everybody, this is Caleb again, and today I'm bringing you a look at SketchUp and a plugin for SketchUp called SketchUCam. Now, I will point out that I am not very good at using this software, or the plugin for that matter. Um, I've spent eh, probably four or five hours messing around with it, but I really probably should have done more reading on tutorials and stuff. It's rather complex because it's a 3D uh, CAD software which, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a little bit of experience with uh, Blender, so I understand that it needs to be complex, and I also understand, and you should understand, that every 3D CAD software does things differently, because there is a million different ways to do things. But basically, we're going to make a iPhone stand, just like we have in all the other videos. Um, the reason where you checking this software out is because a user actually requested it in the comment section of the last video. So to start off we're basically just going to click with the rectangle tool and drag out a little bit but we're not going to click again to finalize this this rectangle. We're going to instead use the numpad to type in our dimensions. So 90 millimeters and then we're going to use a comma to separate it by 50 millimeters. Hit enter and it looks tiny but we're going to just zoom in and then I'm going to create another rectangle which is going to be 65 millimeters by 18 millimeters enter click that use the move tool I'm going to find the midpoint on this rectangle and then I'm going to move it to the next or to the midpoint of the other rectangle and then I'm going to kind of move it down along that path it will lock in place so it makes it a little bit easier so there's the basic geometry that's basically using SketchUp right there to just build the geometry in 2D space as you can see it's flat which I don't think you want to have anything three-dimensional I think you definitely want it to be flat for doing this part okay so the next thing we're gonna do is actually set up SketchUCam so we go to the parameters tab or window and we look at everything. So the feed rate, I'm going to set to 1300. I think is what I want. Yeah, sure. Um, material thickness, obviously, we're going to want it to three quarter inch, so 19.05 millimeters. Bit uh, dimension is going to be three point. Okay. 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters work. I'm um, enabling the generate multipath. And then we're going to want 1.5 millimeters. You might be able to get away with more. I haven't tested it. I actually need to be messing with it, but my machine's still kind of torn apart. I need to actually work on that. But anyways, that's what I've used in the past, so that's what I'm going to try here. All right, once all that's inputted and you're happy with the settings of all the different parameters, all right, you hit OK. And then the first thing you'll notice after hitting OK is that you get these, you get some dimensions and a box. That's your safety area. So the way that SketchUCam works is that it creates a safety area, and you have a safety area tool right here that you can create a larger one or a custom one and basically the idea is that you can only cam geometry that is within that area I guess the idea would be that you generate a safety area that is no larger than the work area of your machine and then you know for a fact that any geometry that you're messing with inside of that will fit on your machine so the first thing I'm going to do is use the outside cut tool and I'm just going to click on it right like that and then I'm going to hover over this outside rectangle not the inside one. You can, basically the red line represents the offset of the tool path that you'll be using to cut on that. And I believe I just remembered one last thing I wanted to make sure is right. Yeah, that's not right. So 3.75, okay, there we go. So back to this tool, click on that, 
and boom, that's now cammed. Now there's a bunch of other tools that we can see up here. This this toolbar and this toolbar are both for um, SketchUcam. So that just for reference for anybody that's wondering. We're going to use the pocket face tool. And the first thing we're going to do is see down here it says depth percentage. So after doing a little bit of math, it's going to be somewhere around 74, 73%. So we're just going to type 74%, hit enter. We could be more precise, but you know, I'm just not needing it to be because it just has to hold the phone in place. And if it's a little bit off, it's not really going to bother it too much. So as we can see, just like before, we can hover over it and you can see the path, the tool path basically that will be used. So we just click there and there we're done. The camming is done. So I'm going to click on this selector tool and I'm going to select the whole geometry. And I'm just going to move it all into the um, work area because at when we first started off there, the offset of the tool basically made it so that the cutting path he, over on this side and down here was actually outside of the cutting area or the safe area. And so that wouldn't have saved or generated any G-code. And there, I just screwed that up. Uh, all right, so the next thing we're going to do is hit this big green arrow, which will output our G-code to a file. There it is. And then I'm going to actually drop this down, and I've got Linux CNC running on my VMware. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to fire up Linux CNC. Home all. All right, now I'm going to open. All right, so basically we've got it in there. So it looks like there's no errors, and it looks it looks right for the most part. It's a little different because of the fact that the corners aren't don't have a radius on them. Typically, I make them with a with about an eighth inch uh, radius, but I tried for quite a few hours to figure out how to make. Uh, rectangles with a radius and I could not find a tool or a solution to do that reliably and quickly so I just decided to forget about it so sorry about that and if you have a suggestion of how you should do that um, for anybody that's interested in using this why don't you um, throw that in the comments below it'd be very helpful I know at least for me it would be helpful I'm sure it would be helpful for anybody else that might be interested in this software so that's basically that's basically it right there. Um, I've got to say, my feelings on this as a, as a CAD CAM solution is mixed. On one hand, I think it's really fast and easy um, to do, and I think it's really cool because you, you can make uh, 3D you know, models, so you can actually build a very complex and intricate um, a design or build inside you know this software and then disassemble it you know into its component its flatter components you know so that you can actually then mill the individual components separately I think that this could be really cool however I think that the people it's going to be really good for as a plug-in and as a as a means to use this is people who ha already are very well acquainted with um, SketchUp as an application and are used to using it. And then, you know, that's where SketchUcam really is a great plugin. I don't per I, I don't particularly think that I'm going to um, spend the time to learn how to use this software. Um, but, you know, maybe I might change my mind later on if I need something uh, uh, like this to, to do, you know, a certain project. But I definitely can see where it could be very useful and I think it's a very nice tool and hopefully this was helpful to everybody and thanks for watching to the video and have a good day. Bye.